So the next step of development here is going to be looking at what's referred to as fetogenesis. That is the actual production of the fetus from the embryo. In this, we're going to look at things that are related to what's referred to as morphogenesis, where we're going to start with the anterior posterior dorsal ventral patterning that took place during the embryonic phase, and then we're going to expand upon that. So in morphogenesis, we're taking the anterior posterior development patterning that we had in the embryogenesis, and what we're going to do is we're going to start to have genetic modifications within the cells based off of expressions referred to as Hox genes or homeobox genes. These Hox genes and homeobox genes are going to modify their expression based off of various growth factors, the same growth factors that we looked at just previously in terms of BIMPs and ADMPs. But we're also going to start seeing epigenetic regulatory expressions, which is going to turn on and off various aspects of genes so that even though we're all coming from a single cell, all the various cells that make up all the various tissues and organs of the body will have various genetic expressions. This genetic expression is based off of the amount of RNA that's being expressed and the proteins that come about from this RNA expression. Based off of the RNA expression and the proteins that are coming about, we're going to start to have a morphological shape take place during the fetogenesis process where the embryo is going to start to turn into the parental organism over time. And it goes through the full cascade of evolutionary patterns in this process, all based off of Hox gene expression leading to the morphogenesis. Where what we end up getting is we end up getting the differential embryonic cell layers, allowing for different genes to be turned on and turned off. And this turning on and turning off leads to organismal development in a uh, dorsal uh, ventral patterning, anterior to posterior, as well as a proximal to distal patterning based off of which Hox genes are being initiated and how those Hox genes are going to turn on and turn off various genetic expressions as it relates to the changes of growth factors that we see. And so what we're able to do is we're able to see within this overall cascade of events, various Hox genes, in this case here, the Hox A's, B's, C's, and D's, as well as the subclassifications of the Hox genes, in which we see this posterior to anterior representation, and then we'll see a secondary representation that is going to be proximal to distal, and then anterior to posterior, or cranial to caudal, in terms of the overall development of the organism. And so what we're able to do is we're able to eventually get the overall regulation of the Hox genes within this specific genetic sequence that leads to the specific cell lineages that's going to allow for the differential patterning of expression. And so based off of the pattern of expression coming from the mesoderm, the exoderm, and the endodermal tissue, we're going to start seeing differential growth patterns within this embryo. And this differential growth pattern within the embryo is going to lead to what's referred to as budding. Within the budding, we're going to see limbs as well as central structures, such as cranium, cranial structures developing from this embryonic disc. In this, we're going to start seeing things like Wince and Sonic Hedgehogs, SHH, as well as BIMPs and Indels going ahead and turning on and turning off the genetic expression. In this, we're going to start to have development of limb buds. The limb buds are going to start from the most cranial to most caudal and from the most proximal to the most distal based off of when the differential growth factors are initiating the growth signals from the three dermal layers. And so we're going to have various feedback regulations taking place. And this various regulation of feedback is going to go about activating or inhibiting the development of the limbs, in this case here, the upper extremity. And so based off of that initiation of activation and inhibition, we end up getting the growth phases coming out of the limb buds, where we start with the various Hox genes being turned on, getting a long bone form turned off, and then we get secondary turned on and turned off that leads to the other 
long bones within the upper extremity, the humerus, the radius, the ulna. And then we start having variable initiations of uh, Hox gene initiation, allowing for the development of the carpals followed by the metacarpals, and then the phalanges within the digital rays. This gets elaborated between the interactions of the tissues within these structures, and eventually it will get to the overall development of the extremity that we're looking at in the process of limb budding, which we'll take a look at in a animation really fast here. So in the next animation, watch the budding processes as they take place and note the organization of the dermatomes and myotomes coming away from those limb buds as it relates to the mapping that we saw within the nervous system in regards to the anatomy of the body. So let's go ahead and summarize the overall uh, process that's taking place here. So at the end of the first trimester, we're going to have implantation of the embryo into the uterus, into the endometrium. We will have growth of a, to a few centimeters. We're going to have increase of mass to a few grams. Even though it's the smallest and the lightest, it's going to be the greatest amount of growth that we see. We're going to see early de system development. During the second trimester, we're going to see expanded growth of the fetus with expansion and integration of the systems. During the third trimester, we're going to see maturation of the systems to the point where it becomes ready for the external environment. And by, I mean the fetus. 
The internal fetal circadian rhythm is going to be established during this period of time in which the sleep-wake cycle will be established within the final part of the third trimester where mothers-to-be should be matching sleep-wake cycle to when they feel uh, fetus activity. The weight gain and body growth during the third trimester is going to establish the viability of the fetus post uh, postnatal, so after birth, there is a direct correlation between birth weight and mortality and morbidity of the neonate, where the greater the weight, the greater the viability of the fetus within the neonatal stage of infancy. Most of the mass that will be taking place is going to prep the fetus for the stress of birthing followed by the stress of the external environment. Along the entire pathway, there's various abnormalities that can't come, up, come, can't come into play due to exposure to environmental issues that the mother is exposing the fetus to. These can include environmental toxins. They can also include vitamin deficiencies and or vitamin toxicities. Most of the Issues here are related to uh, teratogens, the same teratogens that we saw when we looked at gametogenesis. The morphological changes that associate with these abnormalities can equate to functional deficits postnatally. The severity of the issues is going to be based off of the timing of exposure and the type of teratogen that is being exposed to. It can actually lead to early termination of the fetus. In the packet, I've given you a table of, or excuse me, an image of various times at which issues can arise. The earlier within fetal development that teratogen exposure happens, the less viable the fetus will be and the more apt for self-abortion there will be. The later, the more specific the abnormality will come about. There are distinct toxins that can that the fetus can be exposed to that can lead to dependency issues postnatally and through infancy due to pharmaceutical exposure that the mother has for the fetus. So if a mother is taking distinct pharmaceutical agents, it can lead to distinct abnormalities in terms of neurological dependency for those pharmacological agents. There are also other pharmacological agents that can come about that can lead to uh, malformations and issues within the central systems of the body as well.